Tracy Martin and Sabrina Fulton have come to the Seminole County Criminal Court to see their son's killer. And to pray he stays behind bars. What's going through your mind right now? Today, the man who killed Trayvon Martin is applying for bail. It took six weeks of investigation and enormous public pressure before George Zimmerman was finally charged. Right. On February 26, he followed the young black man and shot him, later telling police he'd acted in self-defense. You had mentioned Mr. Zimmerman saying that he was having his head hit on the back, correct? Yes. He mentioned that his head was being physically bashed against the concrete sidewalk and that he, this was just prior to him firing the shot. No, thank you, Your Honor. Thanks to Florida's Stand Your Ground law, that claim could give him immunity from prosecution and make police liable for a wrongful arrest. Well, it's very clear that the parents were disappointed as they left the courthouse today. Trayvon Martin's parents say they're devastated. A Florida judge has ruled that George Zimmerman, the man who killed their son, can go free on bond. Trayvon Martin's parents aren't alone in their grief and anger. believe stand your ground laws let people get away with murder. It just reminds me of the old western movies. I feel like we're back in the wild wild west where we all should strap on our belts and get our guns and our harnesses and just walk around. That's the way it seems like it's going and that's just pathetic. This picture here is very special because this is when they were first brought into life. My beautiful boy twins. This is Brandon. He was a little bit bigger than Chris. Bonnie Baker's son Brandon isn't a household name like Trayvon Martin, but he was shot and killed just nine days after Trayvon. This is, captures his true spirit because he was so happy and sweet and loving. And the police didn't arrest his shooter either. Did anyone ask the police what had happened to this guy and why he hadn't been charged? Or They called it the stand your ground. It was for the, the stand your ground law in Florida. This is ABC Action News. We're also following the latest developments in another stand your ground case. This one in Pinellas County, where so far no charges have been filed either. The sheriff's office says Baker and his twin brother were coming home from a party one night in early March in separate cars. 23-year-old security guard Seth Browning started following Baker. He later claimed he thought Baker was driving suspiciously. Brandon's sister Brandy takes me out to the scene of the shooting in her brother's ute. The guy was tailgating and followed him, but he definitely turned here into his neighborhood so see the group Brandon's pursuer ones. followed him almost to his home his Brandon's brother and girlfriend were behind in another car we're gonna pull right into where Brandon stopped Brandy thinks her brother pulled over so his pursuer could drive away but he didn't Brandon got out and confronted him which by that I, time I mean, Brandon's brother had also arrived on the scene this is where Brandon died. And Chris ran to Brandon's aid, and by this time, all he sees is a hose of pepper spray being sprayed in his brother's face. Seth Browning, a security guard who'd served in the army in Afghanistan, told police he used the pepper spray because Brandon was aggressive. He said Brandon then punched him through his car window so he drew his gun. Brandon had turned towards Chris and raised his arms, and when he did that, the killer shot him in the heart under his arm <laughs> and died, and he died, and he fell back, and Chris 
didn't let him fall. You, you let him. You let him lay softly into the grass. Let's just say that the story that Seth Browning's told is true. Let's just say Brandon was angry and Brandon tried to punch him. If that story was true, do you think he would have been justified in doing what he did? Absolutely not. No way. Well, Brandon that, was how... unarmed. The pepper spray would have been enough. The pepper spray would have been enough. Why? And then roll your window up and get the heck out of there and why call the pepper, police. Why pepper spray someone because they want to know why you're following? He, he did have not. Away deserved to die because this killer didn't like the way he was driving. If Brandon had been shot seven years ago, before Florida introduced its Stand Your Ground law, Seth Browning would almost certainly have been arrested. There is no justice when we have a law like this. Because there's nothing showing greater stupidity than a law that causes people to be shot dead or killed when they wouldn't have been otherwise. Homicide prosecutor Brian Kavanagh says Stand Your Ground is a recipe for escalating conflict. There is always a right to self-defense enshrined in the law. Absolutely. What's the difference? There's a long-standing principle of law called the Castle Doctrine, which essentially means if you are in your own home, you have a right to stand your ground and use deadly force if necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm. But now, the Castle Doctrine has been extended literally to everywhere. On the street, how many altercations, how many road rage cases are there where the argument escalates? and somebody pulls a weapon, then somebody pulls another weapon. The next thing you know, someone is dead. More than 20 states now have stand your ground laws on the statute books, thanks to a powerful gun lobby. The National Rifle Association was even involved in writing the legislation. But ever since Trayvon Martin's death became big news, there have been calls to repeal the laws. State legislator Dennis Baxley sponsored Florida's Stand Your Ground law, and he's been invited to debate it at this forum in Orlando. Thanks for all your work on this. I know it's a lot. Listening closely in the audience, George Zimmerman's defense attorney, Mark O'Mara. Nothing in this statute authorizes you to pursue, provoke, confront other people. This is a law for law-abiding citizens who are doing nothing wrong, and they become the victim of violence. And the presumption should be on their side. Legal academic Elizabeth Megale disagrees. Can I respond to that very briefly? The problem is that it does go beyond protecting just those law-abiding citizens who are trying to protect themselves. It protects the person that is pursuing. It protects the person who is confronting. It protects the person who's chasing someone four blocks away and shoots them or stabs them in the back. Do you see reason for modification of the law to kind of carve out those types of unintended consequences? No. You know, it's easy to sit around for two or three hours and discuss what we think someone could have done or should have done or would have done. But in fact, the victim of violent attack has seconds to decide, do they want to be a victim or not? We need to stand beside them and let them make that judgment. Charles Padani knows what it's like to make that judgment. On February 29, 2008, he killed a man. Okay. I have to carry this everywhere I go. Unfortunately, that's just the, the times that we live in. The night that you shot Casey Landers, was that the first time that you'd had to use the gun? Yes. 
Gracias. Charles Padani lives in a small, poor neighborhood not far from Tampa. One evening, four years ago, its peace was disturbed, so Charles called the police. Yes, I'd like to report a uh, reckless driver um, going through Bay Hill Circle. They get around the corner in front of my house sideways. There's kids playing out there and everything. A couple of idiots. He called again later when they returned. They were driving, driving way too fast. There was kids out on the street and everything, and I don't know if they're drunk or what. Charles is a motorcycle enthusiast. He loves speed and he's not afraid of taking risks. But he's also cautious. When he went out later that night to look for the driver, he took his gun. I decided to go out and try and get a tag number from the vehicle. He says he had a polite conversation with the owner of the vehicle who apologized. But as he was leaving, someone else at the house decided to confront him. There was a young man out there ripping his shirt off and uh, asked him if he wanted to, you know, if I wanted a piece of him. And I guess the mistake I made was turning my back on him because he sucker punched me from behind. And it instantly put me down on the ground and I believe I was out for several seconds. Could you have run away after he'd struck the first blow? He didn't give me a chance. He didn't give me a chance. It's, and I was on my knees and starting to get up and he grabbed me immediately. I uh, drew my gun. He was coming down on me again, which was pretty foolish, but um, I had had the gun loaded by that time and that's when I took a shot, when he was coming at me again, because basically I'm defenseless, I'm on my back now, you know? And uh, that ended it right there, uh, unfortunately. But fortunately for me. Charles Padani shot and killed 21-year-old Casey Landes. This is his mother, Ruby. We are walking up into the driveway where my son Casey was shot and killed February 29th, 2008. She doesn't think her son deserved to die. Rest in peace, my son. But by the time Charles shot your son, he'd already been hurt pretty bad. I've seen no. photos of the blood. Of that man didn't have but one little cut on his lip. That was it. After the shooting, police held Charles Padani for seven hours while they tried to work out whether to charge him. Investigating detective spent much of the time on the phone to the state attorney's office. Before Stand Your Ground became law, Charles would have had to prove he acted in self-defense. Now the onus was on police and prosecutors to prove he didn't. At that point, I don't think I believed that the law was going to help me at all. You know, that I was probably going to go to trial, go to jail. Charles Padani was charged with manslaughter. Under Stand Your Ground, it was up to a judge, not a jury, to decide whether he was immune from prosecution. The judge apologized to Casey Landers' family, saying the law required him to dismiss the charge. And I don't see how it could be Stand Your Ground when someone literally puts a gun to someone's cheek and pulls the trigger. Why not? A fire off a warning shot or something like that you know or say hey I got a gun 
ultimately, do you feel that the law worked the way it should? Do you feel that justice was done and that your actions were vindicated? Yes. Yes. If it hadn't been for the law, I probably would have gone through a lengthy trial, um, could have been convicted. Do you think he should have just taken a beating if he needed to? Yeah. Yes, I do. I honestly do. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out here today. Brandon was a good guy. I hope that you all will at least go and sign his petition to bring justice about. This is Kevin, the father of Brandon Baker, who was killed by a man who didn't like his driving. 6787, up front, right here, you're a winner. Today, the family is holding a benefit concert to help pay for Brandon's funeral. Cases like that of Brandon Baker and Trayvon Martin have convinced many that Stand Your Ground must be repealed. Florida's governor has appointed a task force to review the law. You believe someone got away with murder? Oh, yeah, definitely. And only because of this law? Yes. You will always have some decisions that are close to the foul line. Is it in or is it out? Does it apply or does it not apply? My responsibility as a policymaker is to protect the public safety of 20 million people. What do you think the consequences will be if the law is repealed? There'll be more innocent people going to jail for just trying to protect themselves against undue violence. Plain and simple. Two months after Brandon Baker's death, Police and prosecutors say they're still considering whether or not to lay charges against his killer. All he had to do was call in Brandon's plate and go on his merry way. But he took it upon himself to be the policeman, the judge, and the executioner. 